Hi everyone, this is James with James Running Skaters with a part two installation, or should I say installment, from part one. If you haven't seen part one, you may want to go back and look at that. Um, I, I will put a link inside the video description and or on, a link in the annotations on top of the video. However, depending on where on the web you're watching this, you may not be at YouTube or MySpace or wherever, and thereby some of these options I just told you about may not be available. So just Google it. I am punching the title, I'll cut and paste the title of this video into Google, and it should give you both part one and part two. With that said, I'd like to pick up where we left off yesterday here in regards to a strange phenomenon, which I believe I have now explained. And I think it's very important that we understand what's going on here because it, it, it's got some interesting possibilities here for whatever it may be worth. Okay. First of all, I want to let you give you a quick uh, update for those of you who may not have seen video number one. This is a four inch magnet across. It's, uh, excuse me, two inches across. It's four inches high and a half inch across. I have two of them here. And both of these are on a wheel, a bicycle, English uh, racing bicycle wheel that's on a wire mesh table. Okay, so the axle of the of the of the uh, bicycle wheel is just fastened to the table. Here we have a round steel plate that goes all the way around. I have a screw in my hand. As you can see in here the material. Also, you can see that when I take this screw, hold it freely in my hand, it does not stick to the metal. Okay, it doesn't stick. So thereby, this is not magnetized. Okay, as you look around, there's nothing behind here. Okay. And also show you underneath the table, there's nothing underneath here. All you see here are the components of the screws uh, that hold the table together and, of course, my shielding. And I'm using um, a brass screw so this way it um, you know, doesn't interfere with magnetism, magnetics. Okay, so what I wanted to show you here, or demonstrate, that um, for reasons unknown, like I explained yesterday here, that normally uh, when you get a magnet near a piece of steel it is naturally drawn to this to the metal okay and that is just logic I mean a magnets are attracted to steel well in this particular case that does not happen at least not here at this point in this demonstration even though this magnet extremely powerful is within less than an inch and a half between here and there so close. This magnet does not, not only is it not drawn to this, but the magnet is actually repelling itself away from the steel. Yes, you heard that right. The magnet is repelling itself away from the steel rather than being drawn to it. I believe what's happening here is simply this. That the, 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 the face of this magnet is the polarity. This is north. And I believe what happens is, is that as this magnet gets really close to this metal, it's so powerful that the flux overpowers this sheet metal here and makes the sheet metal uh, become north as well. In other words, this, this, this metal is flooded with flux, and it's all north. Okay, so then as the magnet goes through, then the other side, the south side, that side of it saturates this shielding with the same like polarity of the south pole. Okay, so thereby as it passes, we get two polarity changes on the face of this metal here. Okay, so I, let me show you what's going on here. I'll take my finger and I'll just gently push this into this. Okay, it's going to go through. It just with the slightest ease, it doesn't take much, it just wants to go through. I'll just give it a little push. See, it's trying to, it, it is bouncing back. If I give it enough, okay, it's going to go through. And the second magnet goes through. But however, if I try to bring it this way, it doesn't want to go through. It really pulls back. And I'll even bring it up to the second, the first magnet in line and show you it still does the same thing. It doesn't, and I'm not pushing that back. It's doing it all on its own. Here, let me just give a little push here and see it breaks. It just wants to bounce back. So I believe I think I know what's going on now. And I'm, of course, I'm open to your input. Um, my, con my, my thoughts are is that what would happen, uh, the reason it wants to pull back the other way, by the way, that I feel, and this is my, in my opinion, is that the, the, because there's still a lot of metal on this side of this edge, and there's none over here, that the magnet, once it passes this, is being drawn to this steel here, and that's what's causing it to accelerate. So my thought is, is that what would happen if I was just to cut this steel off and make a short little segment and just put another segment there. Would this pattern repeat itself? Would this action 
uh, repeat itself, leapfrogging from one to another. I, I don't know if it will or not, um, because then it's got to get past the other edge of the other side of the shielding, which might set up the same problem, and then, of course, this won't work. But, however, in this particular case, on this end of the shielding, the shielding here is doubled here. It's twice as thick, um, which I think is Part of the reason why it is becoming so energized here with the flux of each pole. Whereas here on this side, it's real thin and the flux can't do as, uh, can't retain as much of the flux on this side of, of the, past the edge of the shielding. So with that thought in mind, I just thought I'd share that with you here and I wanted to have your all's input. Um, also, I want to address some issues here uh, in regards to free magnetic energy dot info. Um, the website is not about magnetic motors. Go to the home page and you will learn that. That's not what it's about. Um, it's about electric motors. Electric motors that have the ability to run themselves. Don't laugh because they're out there. What I was trying to do here is look into the research and find out how much validity there was to it and if it was really possible. Well, the more and more I looked into it, the more I began to realize, hey, wait a minute. And then I looked into it even more. I said, oh, this is interesting. Then I had a major aha moment. And that aha or light bulb moment was huge. And then I came up with my own design concept, a major improvement on a technology that goes all the way back to the late 1800s during the Tesla days. So this is public domain knowledge. All I'm doing is taking knowledge that already exists and, and, and taking it to a whole new level. So I just want to say another issue here is that just because a man is showing you cause and effect between a magnet and steel is not a scam. I'm not claiming perpetual motion here. I'm not trying to claim this is a motor because it's not. A motor you have to have something that goes around and around all the time without any assist from anything, unless of course plug it into the wall of course, then uh, that's not what's going on here. I'm just showing cause and effect to show the physics of, uh, and dynamics of various issues with plates and runway plates and contoured plates, etc. That's not a fraud. That's not a scam. This guy, Larry Licks, likes to flag my videos thinking this is some kind of scam. Well, sorry, but a scam is not show and, it's not show and tell. Now, if you go to my website, all the research, my, the research that I am creating and I'm generating from my own homework, that as it goes up online, that is my research and my work and my sweat and my blood and my tears from all of the work and energy that I'm taking time out to do. Okay? If I want to make that same information available in an ebook, that for, for work that I myself have performed, that's not a scam either. Anybody can do research. People do it all the time. All the time people do research out there. And then they sell their research. Okay? The libraries are full of research books. I mean, that is not a scam. Give me a break, some of you all. What are you all thinking? Flagging my videos is a scam. Okay? Then on top of all of this, um, some of you saying that I'm not making the information available up online like I said I was going to. That the only way to gain access to the information is through the ebook. Those of you who think that, you're wrong. The information is available and continued to, and will continue to be available up online for free. What that is in the ebook as well. The purpose of the ebook is twofold. One, it makes it easy for you rather than having to sift through an entire website to find all the pertinent data that you need. It's conveniently disseminated into a handy little printout that you can print out through your printer and staple all the pages together. I don't know how many pages it'll be, probably 25, 35 pages, maybe more. And, and plus some blueprints and stuff that I'm going to generate and exclusively create these blueprints of my own design concept and make that as a bonus, a bonus in my ebook. Um, that's not a scam, guys. Give me a break. But I'm doing something that all these other people out there who might very well be scamming you in some of this area of technology, you have to buy their ebook to see the data. You don't have to buy my flipping ebook to see my data. So stop it. Stop the rumors. Okay, with that said, let me let you all go. I appreciate your time and letting me bend your ear. Um, I will get this stuff up online. I'm having to deal with some uh, very important issues in my life right now. And if, if not by sometime late this summer, by early fall, uh, the information should start going up online at freemagneticenergy.info. Just be patient. Please stop with the rumors. Go to the home page and get your story straight because there you will find the hard data that apparently some of you all lack. 
But I said, <laughs> let me let you all go. Thank you again. This is James with James Roney Skaters, wishing you all the very best of a great week. Bye now.